Welcome back, fifth grade. We are on Domain 3 Poetry, Lesson 12, Constantly Risking Absurdity, number 15. Our objectives for today are to analyze the poem and identify poetic devices such as personification and extended simile, and to apply learned poetry skills to compose a final original Ars Poetica. Our key vocabulary for today, absurdity is foolishness, stupidity, and senselessness, perceive to understand or see, perforce, necessarily, rhyme, a variation of the word rhyme, spread eagle, a kind of jump in which the arms and legs are stretched out so that the body takes the shape of an X, supposed is believed to be true, taut, stretched tightly, ars poetica, a poem about the craft of poetry, and personification describing non-human things that they have as if they had human qualities. So the subject of the poem in this lesson is actually just poetry, and the poet actually makes comparisons about uh, poet, poets and the kind of another kind of professional. Before we get into the poem, let's read his biography. Lawrence Ferling Hetty was born in Yonkers, New York, in 1919. Several months before Fer Ferling Getty was born, his father died of a heart attack. Unable to care for him, his mother sent him to live with various relatives, and he eventually landed in France with his aunt. After they moved to America for work, his aunts left suddenly, leaving him with a foster family. It was there that he first encountered poetry. After serving in the United States Navy in World War II, Ferlinghetti began writing poetry by imitating his heroes, T.S. Eliot and Ezra Pound. Determined to develop his own voice, he began to focus on creating a new style of poetry leading to a collection, A Coney Island of the Mind. Soon after its publication, Ferlinghetti started a poetry magazine and opened the City Lights Bookstore in San Francisco. Ferlinghetti's poetry is known for its creative imagery and humor. He continues to write and publish today. Okay, I will pause my video for a few seconds. Feel free to pause at any time to reread the poem more than one time. So the poem used the poem structure to help reflect the subject. So if you notice, this is kind of a little scattered uh, how he set it up. So that gives it a little bit more meaning. A lot. Remember when poets change the setting or the setup of how they po their poem is built, it usually changes the meaning. This poem includes similes, which remember those are comparisons we're using like or as. It also has personification, or remember that's when they add human characteristics to things that are non-human. And it also has illusion. Remember, illusion means an indirect reference to an outside work of art or culture. So he's included a lot of different poetry devices that we have already talked about during this unit. So poems about the craft of writing poetry have a special name. They're called Ars Poetica. It's a Latin term that translates to loosely, really, the art of poetry. Ferlinghetti's constantly, constantly risking absurdity, 15, is an example of an Ars Poetica. So you've learned a lot about reading and writing poetry in this unit. So in the next activity, you're going to take all that knowledge of all those things we've talked about in this entire unit, and you're going to write your own Ars Poetica. So the few, the list that I have here with figure of language, metaphor, simile, repetition, rhyme, stanza, or line breaks, illusion, personification, tone, those are just a few of the terms that we've used during this unit. Feel free to use any others that we've talked about, but these are things that we want to you to include in your Ars Poetica because that's what makes it an Ars Poetica. So your assessment is to write one. In your poem, you're going to describe the craft of poetry, why poets should practice it, what poetry does, and how poets should do their jobs. Follow the prompts below to compose your poem. So first, you're going to name at least three things you notice about poems that you read. So if you'd like, feel free to watch any of the previous videos to kind of review some poems that you've read and what are some things you've noticed in those poems. Number two, name at least three things you think about when you write a poem. So when you've been writing your own poetry, what have you been thinking about? Number three, what is the most important thing you've learned about writing poetry? What's a skill or what's something that has been really beneficial or helpful for you when you're writing? Number four, what is your favorite poetic device to use and why do you like to use it? Again, you can use the list provided or any of the terms we've already talked about in this unit. 
Then number five, you're going to pretend that someone is reading your poems. What response, emotions, or actions would you want your poem to evoke to the reader? How do you want your reader to feel? Number six, based on the answer to number five, what do you think poetry does for people? So use your answers to write an Ars Poetica for people who have never written poetry before. What would they need to know in order to write poetry successfully? Make sure your poem tells them at least four different things about what poetry writers should know or do. This is going to be your assessment for today. So you're going to send this to your teacher as soon as you complete writing your Ars Poetica. And we will see everyone in our next lesson.